What's up, Illini Nation? It's Ryan Baker. I know it's been a minute, but we are back with the latest installment of RBI. Today, we catch up with the head man in charge of Illini football, Coach Lovey Smith. We'll discuss how he's getting settled in after a year on the job, a little spring cleanup with the football squad, and how much he's in Lovey with champagne. Check it out. Coach, always good to see you. How's everything? Life's good. It's hard to believe you're coming up on your one year anniversary here at Illinois. A year ago this time, you were unpacking boxes, living out of a suitcase. Are you a little more settled now as you approach uh, one calendar year as the head football coach at Illinois? Uh, a lot more so. Um, you know, we're using a, not necessarily using a map, but uh, we had to get direction quite a bit back then. So you know your way around campus now? No, you know no, where the quad is? Well, Green Street. Uh, we're making progress <laughs> on that. Know our way around, of course, Champaign a little bit more. And, uh, you know, this time last year, uh, you know, with spring ball, we had no, uh, names on the back of helmets. We know the players now, so it's been a, a, a lot better, of course, after a year. And, and you personally, uh, it was a whirlwind. You, you, you know, one week you're coaching the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, a couple weeks later you're at home and this Josh Whitman guy knocks on your door. Next thing you know, you're on a plane here to Champaign mm -hmm. and, and you're back coaching in the college ranks. Uh, how long has it take or did it take you to finally get to a point where like, you know what, I feel good. This is where I want to be. And, you know, I'm, I'm comfortable in this situation. Well, I felt pretty comfortable uh, right away. And you, know, you mentioned Josh Whitman. Uh, you know, we hit it off right away. Mm -hmm. I, uh, you know, laying out the plan for how uh, we were going to bring Illinois football back. Uh, made a lot of sense then, makes more sense right now. So that transition has gone well, but there has been comfort throughout. And it helps an awful lot when you're dealing with a bunch of men mm -hmm. like we have. I mean, guys come to work every day, you know, want to be coached. And they've really bought into uh, what we're trying to do. And, you know, obviously you and Josh share a football bond with him having played here at Illinois, played in the NFL. Uh, you could talk X's and O's about the game, but how has your relationship with your boss, your athletic director, developed and, and continued to grow? Well, just, you know, uh, I think every relationship you have to, uh, you know, go through things. Mm -hmm. I mean, situations that, that come up. Uh, you're right, the initial stage, just getting to know each other. Uh, you know, going out, you know, hitting the state, talking to different booster groups. I mean, every time you're around each other, you, you know, learn a little bit more. And then just training camp. Uh, you know, Josh is very involved, you know. He's one of our ambassadors, you know, mm -hmm. a guy that's uh, worn a uniform, been through what players have to go through. So he's been such a, a great help of, you know, recruiting weekends, talking to the athletes. Uh, so that's helped an awful lot. And, um, you know, where we are right now, you know, it's a, now it's that next stage. And, uh, you know, we're, we have some really important things coming up. You know, from one year on the job, we realize our facilities aren't mm -hmm. what they need to be, but Josh has done a great job of uh, spearheading that drive to get our new facility in place. And you're talking about the south end zone, the, the plans in place to really upgrade the facilities and, and put it on, on par or exceed in any football program in the country, right? Yeah, south or west. <laughs> a couple of different options that we have with it, but uh, that's what we've been doing here. I don't want to spill the beans, but you the architects spill, yeah, you're, st still uh, under construction in terms of the plans, right? The plan but, is still uh, being constructed, I'll say that right now, uh, but we've uh, gone and looked at a lot of the top facilities around, and uh, once we get ours completed, uh, it'll be as nice as anyone. And, you know, th that's just a part of the building process. If we take a step back a little bit, you're talking about you got to go through some situations. Well, the 2016 season would be one of those. I mean, yes. knowing you as long as I did, you set the bar high. You want to win every game. You want to compete in every game. How difficult was it for you to, to have the team struggle? I heard you say a lot of times last year, well, you know, when you're not a good football team, there's not a lot of good things to say. So we're not going to try to, you know, you know, sugarcoat things. We got to get better. But how difficult was that for you to go through a three and nine season? Difficult, but uh, you had to face reality. Uh, we weren't a good football team last year, and uh, you know the goal going into the season, of course, to win every game, but to play as well as we could mm -hmm. up to our potential. And uh, uh, we we have some things that we have to correct, we have to make better. We've done that. 
you know, of course, the first step is going out, you know, getting a good recruiting class in. Uh, we've done that. So we're taking the necessary steps to take that next step. But, uh, and there's no reason to believe that uh, we can't take, again, a huge step this coming season. You've signed 25 players at the most recent signing day. Uh, I believe four of those uh, young men are already on campus yes. and taking part in spring practice, uh, getting that influx of talent and, and players. But this is your first recruiting class. I mean, you yes. came here last year, you walked in, and you basically, you know, the food was on the t at least it wasn't on the table, but you had to cook it. It was already in, in, the, in the cupboard. But now you've had a chance to kind of stock your own groceries. Um, how much does that help you as a head coach and your staff knowing, okay, you've had a hand in this recruiting pl process. These are players. You've gone out and recruited and developed relationships with them and their family, and they want to be here playing for the University of Illinois, but also playing for Lovey Smith. Well, that you know, means the world, I mean, to us, you know. Uh, you know, of course, the first year you come in, uh, I, I never looked at the roster before I took the job. It didn't really matter who we had here. We we're going to coach up players we had and then make the necessary mm -hmm. uh, improvements from there. And that's what we've done. But uh, we have, you know, great product, uh, you know, here at the University of Illinois. I mean, great academic reputation. The degree means quite a bit. I mentioned the facilities. Those were the two things. Those are the two driving forces, I think. Uh, along with what you can do on the football mm -hmm. field and whether a young man would want to come to your school or not. But they're listening to our message, our staff. Is, we have an excellent staff, not just on the field, but of recruiters also. And, uh, of course, we're trending this way. Well, more than half your roster are freshmen, redshirt freshmen, and sophomores. So yes. you got a youth move. Is it keeping you young? Is it, well, uh, it's you know, definitely doing that. Are you relating that. to these kids now? Uh, keeping it young, I don't know if I would definitely describe it that way, yeah. but uh, there are a lot Well, I saw you tweet about people. Chance the Rapper, so I mean, I mean, you know, you, well, you must be, you must, you're plugged in, you know. You can start wearing the three-header. No. Well, well, I mean, there are a lot of, uh, of course, special people uh, in our state, and my first job my first day on the job, I talked about keeping our state talent, mm -hmm. of course. And here. you had 10 players out of your recruiting class from 10, the state of Illinois. 10, along, along with what we did in the St. Louis area. So that's big. And, of course, Chance the Raptor is one of our own, too. So we okay. wanna, we're going to try to pull on as many of our resources we got to get him to here to Memorial to get the Stadium, out. bring his Grammys with him. And th that would be big, maybe yeah. opening day against uh, Ball State, maybe. No, a bigger game. We need, they're all big, right? <laughs> they're, they're all big, but I'm um, listening to the students. I know the students would love to have that. There's just so much going on. And after a year of being on campus and uh, whether it's, you know, going to, uh, you know, mass on campus or just hanging around the students, there's, there's quite a bit that we have to offer here. And once we can get young men on, on campus, uh, we, we feel like they're gonna buy into. You mentioned some of our, our athletes that we have, uh, you know, freshmen. It's a different day we're, we're recruiting mm -hmm. now. Uh, so many of the guys wanna get in to go through spring ball. And uh, our four athletes that we have have all done a great job and it'll only help them for next year. Well, young, you know, there's such thing as the, the youthful energy, but you know, they don't know anything either, so that makes your job as coaches a little tougher to teach them and coach them up. Uh, how's that process gone? It's coming along, and uh, you know, of course, you know when I describe our coaching staff and what I want in a coach on our staff, uh, we want stern teachers, and, mm -hmm. and you're teaching so much, so, so much more than uh, just the football part. You know, life skills, how to be a man. And the earlier you get these young men, of course, you can start having influence on them even more. And uh, that eventually is what's gonna get us over the, over the top. You mentioned you're a lot more settled having been here a year. Uh, your familiarity is, is to a point where you can come in and you're not kind of looking around and figuring out what's what and what, you know, where to no. go. But your players are also more comfortable because they know you a little bit better. They know your staff. They know what you expect. Uh, you know, a couple guys said, you know, wh whether it was your personality or, or even digesting what the plays were, it was all coming so fast and quick. They didn't really know what was going on, but they come into spring practice this year, you know, having an idea of what you expect and what they need to do on the field. Uh, out of your returning players, uh, who have you seen make a big jump 
uh, coming into the spring. I mean, one guy, you know, obviously Kendrick Foster had a, a kind of a breakout yeah. season at running back. But who are some other players who've really caught your attention and grown? Well, I mean, it always starts with the quarterback position, and Chase Crouch is our quarterback, even though he's not, you know, able to go through a lot in the spring. But it starts with him. There's one, you know, team leader that you have, and a lot of times you want it to be your QB. That's definitely the case with our guys here. But we have more. Kendrick Foster was outstanding mm -hmm. with his play. And he has moved into more of a leadership role. Nick Algrady, Kristen Delaro. So we have some guys that we're going to really rely on. And on the defensive side of the football, we're younger. But you lost some heavy hitters. We did. A lot we, of guys you know, trying we, to play at the next level. <laughs> we have three of those athletes that are, well, really four of those mm -hmm. athletes that are at the combine right now. So we will miss them. But it's time for the Jalen Dunlaps, mm -hmm. uh, you know, James Crawford, you know, Trey Watson, you know, Jamal Milan. It's time for those players to really take that next step. How much do you enjoy building the relationship with these young men and getting to know them? You know, as opposed to the NFL, players can come and go, there's free agency, but you know, you get a young man at 17, 18 years old, he'll be with you until he becomes 21 or 22. Going through that process again of nurturing these young men, how important is that to you to develop men? Oh, it's, it's very important. And uh, even my time in NFL, I prided myself on the relationships that uh, I was able to form mm -hmm. lifetime relationships. Yeah, a lot of those you know, guys are working for you now. A lot Donnie of Abraham just joined your staff. From a the lot of them are, yeah, and, and, and that's what you get. Right. You know, after you after it's all said and done, you, you know, what you get out of sports. It, it I, I truly believe it is the relationships that you develop. And here, as you mentioned, getting the players a little bit at a younger age when they're they can be influenced a little bit more has been neat. Everything I wanted, mm -hmm. uh, this experience, this this job to be in my role with the players and all has, has gone exactly the way we want it to. And, and again, only, you know, the next step, of course, for us is to, to build a consistent winner and to let the guys know that you can, you know, have great relationships off of the field, their expectations, you can get your degree and you can win football games too. And it's about that family atmosphere, that you're part of something here when you come here and wear the orange and blue. Uh, spring has sprung a little early here with Illini football, with spring practices, you know, starting, uh, you know, going through the, the February and into March. One, why so early and, uh, and no spring game? You're not a big spring game person, but, you know, what do you hope to accomplish through these 15 practices that you have? First off, the, the reason why you want to do it early, we wanted the guys to start thinking hardcore football earlier. Don't sit around and get fat and happy, honey. No, <laughs> and, and a lot of times, you know, you come back to second semester, you have a little grace period, but mm -hmm. you're not really totally into football. You're working out in different things like that. But our guys had to really get into the details of football February the 14th, Valentine's mm -hmm. Day. So I think that's, you know, of course, that process of having them do that has helped an awful lot. Mm -hmm. So we're getting that, you know, from them. Uh, and of course, on the other end, if you have injuries, you have a little bit more time mm -hmm. to heal up. So all of that has been good. Everything we wanted it to be, we wanted to get out of it. We have been able to get it. And spring games are great, but as much as anything, I think it's important for people to come out and just get a glimpse of some of the new players and some of the things we're going to do. But spring ball, normally your numbers are down quite a bit. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, we're barely too deep at some positions right now. It's not that I don't like spring games, but <laughs> numbers just don't allow us to do it. I mean, the depth is most important. So, you know, all the former football players out there, don't worry. You know, there'll be times they can come back and, and have their annual get-togethers right around. And, and that's great that a lot of former players, you see them on social media, are interested in the program. They want to come support. And I'm sure you've heard from a lot of them. Yes, uh, absolutely. And uh, they are. I mean, this is our program. Mm -hmm. And, of course, to welcome all ways and you don't need just one game to be able to get sure. together there's a standing invitation for any of our players and and they've taken us up on that they're they're here periodically throughout and uh and are, are, are still really engaged in what we're doing here uh we listen to them you know i do personally quite a bit and uh and, and eventually they're gonna like what they're gonna see you know represent their team coach i know you got to get back to work a couple more things you know, if you look on, and I know you're on Twitter. I, I check you out a lot, you know, a I lot am. of stuff on Twitter and on the Internet. But you can't believe everything you read or hear. You hear stories, oh, Lovey's not happy at Illinois. He's second-guessing. 
maybe doesn't like it in Champagne. Can you set the record straight for all these trolls out here that, uh, you know, I, you are where you want to be. You're home wearing that, that uh, orange and blue with Illinois. Yeah, I, I think for anybody that knows anything about what we're doing around here, that uh, that seemed like that chatter was, was out, when was that, about 10 years ago they were saying <laughs> that? That was a long time ago. I think it's safe to say we couldn't be happier. I'll just say that with where we are with our program, uh, where we are currently, and the climb to get back on top, and then our future. Our future is looking pretty bright. Well, six months to go until opening day against Ball State. We're counting yes. the days. Coach, always a pleasure. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot to keep up, keep up with Coach Smith, Fighting the Line Football. Keep it locked on FightingTheLineEye.com.